Hi everyone, this is Nick, and it's been a while since I posted, but I wanna start posting uh, more videos again in 2023. And one of the things I like doing most is responding to comments or questions that I get on some of my other YouTube videos. One of our most popular videos so far has been this video on how to analyze, select all that apply questions when they come from uh, platforms like Microsoft Forms or Google Forms. Uh, they don't always export those uh, select all that apply questions in the most easy of ways to analyze on the back end. So we kind of have to come up with some ways to sort of transform that data in Excel on the back end. But I got this question right here from Gabriel S. And he asks, can you suggest a way to analyze option responses that include other with a write-in box? Because some of those uh, platforms Forms, just export that other column as whatever uh, the survey respondent uh, entered into that um, question on the survey or entered into that item on the survey. So I'm going to go down here and I have a very simple example here. We just have 10 respondents, so there are 10 people who responded to the survey. And again, this is kind of like that select all that apply question, which fruits do you, do you like? Just select all the different kinds of fruits that you like. So we have oranges, apples, grapes, and pears. And then there's this other column of data right here. And so right now, a one means that the visitor selected or that the uh, survey respondent selected that um, response on that response option on the survey. But then over here is our other column and you can see that we have, it looks like we have eight people who decided to write in something else. Um, either only write in something else or write in something else along with some of their other responses. So it can be kind of difficult the way that we analyzed uh, those numerical data on the other columns, we created this sum formula. We just summed down the column and that would tell us how many respondents to the survey selected that item and then we just do the calculation if we wanted to have a percentage uh, we would just say you know five uh, we would do a type in here equals five divided by 10 because I know that I have 10 respondents uh, in my uh, survey uh, sample here and so that would be 50% we're going to change that to 50% and then I can uh, uh, drag that across the row copy that formula across the row but then over here, if I take this sum formula and I do that to the other column, you will see that it says zero because Excel doesn't know how to treat text like numbers. So we have to do a few other things here. There's a few different ways that we can do this. And this is one of the ways that I thought I would do this. I want to transform this other uh, category into a way that I know um, into a way that is numerical. So I want, to know, I want to know if somebody selected other and they wrote in something, I want there to be another column that gives me just those ones or blanks. So let's go ahead here. I'm just going to select this entire column for the other. Here's a little Excel trick. When you select an entire column, put your cursor between here when the cross arrows come up and you can actually then move and drag that column of data anywhere you want into uh, this, the uh, spreadsheet there. It's pretty cool. So you don't have to copy and paste you can just sort of take that and move the data around. So right here on the top, I'm going to actually just repeat this. I'm going to say other. So this is where my formula is going to be. Now, in a data set like this, when we only have 10 people, you can just do it quick and dirty. And you can just say, OK, I'm going to say one there, one there, one there. So that works for these. But if you had a data set of hundreds of data, hundreds of data points, that's not going to be uh, very feasible. So let's go ahead and use an if formula that will transform uh, the other data into that numeric, uh, numerical data. So the, the formula that I'm going to use is equals if. And then what I'm going to say is count a equals if count a. Now count a is a formula that will count the number of cells that has something in it. So it's not like sum because sum is going to look for numerical data. Count A is going to look for anything in the cell. So we're going to say if count A, and then I'm going to go ahead, open the parenthesis, and point to the cell right here. I'm going to uh, drag over here. Oops, it looks like because it's in there, I have to go up here. So if the cell in G2, I'm going to go ahead and close the parenthesis now, uh, is equal to 1, that means equal to uh, equal to one means there's something in that cell then I'm going to put a, 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 um, a comma here then if it's true then I want it to spit out a one and then I'm going to say comma if it's false I'm just going to put open and close parentheses I want it to be blank that means I want it to be blank now I'm going to close the parentheses here and we're going to push enter and see what happens Perfect. So because there is something here in G2, it has given me a 1. Now I'm going to copy this formula down. It'll be responsive. 
and now you can see how it works. So everything with an other uh, response has a one, and anything blank, meaning the, the respondent did not put anything in that other, uh, is going to be blank. So that's awesome. Now we can treat this column the same as we treated everything else. So let's go to the total row here, and then I'm just going to drag that sum formula over, and now it gives me eight. So it says that eight of my survey respondents uh, selected that other response and wrote something in. We'll do that with the percentage too. So 80% of our survey respondents selected something else. Now, if I wanted to know which of these, um, if I wanted to kind of get a list of each of these, there's a few different ways to do it. I might actually just do it in a pivot table. Um, it's not going to show me though, um, I might just do it in a pivot table. So let's just do this. I'm gonna go ahead and select this column. We're gonna say enter. I'm gonna give pivot table. We're gonna say, okay, it's gonna go onto a new sheet there and I'm just gonna put in other there. And when I do that, it gives me the entire list of all the other options. Now, this can be um, pretty uh, valuable, but if people are putting multiple um, responses in, it's only, it's not gonna say all the people who selected bananas, and it's not gonna say all the people who selected dragon fruits, or all the people who said, I don't like fruits at all. This is just gonna give you every single response that you got for other. Now the reality is, you'll probably have a survey where not very many people select that other response. Um, if more, if so many people are selecting that other response, then you should probably go back to the beginning uh, of that survey and ask yourself if the survey question is actually meeting your needs because we don't want everyone to be selecting that other response. So that's another kind of piece of survey design. We wanna make sure that we're trying to provide questions with uh, as much, as many survey responses, as many items that we think our visitors are gonna to respond to uh, as possible and kind of minimize the number of those others. So in this way, we know how many people, uh, if, if we use this technique, we know how many people selected other, um, and then we can kind of generate another list of um, all those other responses. Um, if you wanted to also do this in an array formula, we could do this with the new uh, formula called unique. It, that spits out all the unique values in a column. So I'm gonna go ahead and say equals unique and then open the parentheses and then point to the list that I wanna make this is the range of cells there. I'm gonna close parentheses. And then you can see here, it actually gives me every unique value in that column. And you can see it says zero here. That's gonna um, give you, uh, that just tells you that there are some blanks um, in, in the in the column there. So Gabriel, that's one way that I was thinking of doing it. If you wanted to kind of separate all of these, if there are if there are multiple responses and people are separating them by commas, for instance, all you need to do there is just go up to the data tab and then say text to columns. We're gonna keep with this delimited. I'm gonna say next. And then here is the delimiter. And I, right now I have data that people have separated uh, their responses with commas. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And you can see it gives you kind of a, a preview of what that's gonna look like in terms of the columns that it's gonna spit out as. Then we're gonna say next, and then I'm gonna say finish. And now you can see every single individual response now is in its own column. And so then if you wanted to deal with that, you could deal with that in a way, but you're gonna have to work a little bit harder uh, within your Excel document to get every single one of those options if you felt it was necessary to go through all those other write-ins and create multiple categories from them. So it may not be 100% fixed, but I hope a little bit of this uh, will help in analyzing those other responses from select all that apply data. I hope you enjoyed this video. Gabriel, thanks again for the question. If you like this video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up and make sure to click the subscribe button. Every time I post a new video in data design, Excel, PowerPoint, or Word, uh, I'm gonna post it there and you'll get notified of that posting. I hope you all had a great day. I have a, I've had a great time making this video for you and I will see you next time.